WrestleMania 34 swerves, WrestleMania 34, ladies and gentlemen, what just happened? I'm looking at my notes right here, and I see all these swerves from WrestleMania 34, and I'm legitimately saying all of this really just didn't happen. So let's get right on into it. I'm going to start with the top first. Brock Lesnar wins the match at WrestleMania 34 against Roman Reigns. Look. This was a match coming into it where everybody thought, okay, this is, you know, they're going to put the belt on Roman Reigns and whatever. But going into this match, I mean, I was originally skeptic of the build, and I'm about to get into that. As for the match, the crowd, of course, the crowd turned on the match. And looking at the match, it was a bunch of bad, it was a bad match, one of the worst WrestleMania main events of all time. They had, they did nothing but spam finishers the entire match. There was no psychology in the match whatsoever. There was nothing done in the match whatsoever. The crowd turned on the match and look, I originally said, going back a couple of months ago that at the, the night of Roman Reigns promo, his original promo, I said, this is a dangerous route to go because you are giving them a reason to boo Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns brought up the fact that Brock Lesnar was a part-time wrestler. And, like I said, do not do this. You are giving them a reason to crap on the match like they did Lesnar and Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. And here we are. The day after, crowd chanted, this is awful. CM Punk. And they started, the, the, they were, it, it, beach ball mania broke out all of a sudden. And... Looking at the match, Roman Reigns kicked out of like five F5s and still lost the match. Like, uh, what is WWE thinking? At the, at, I'm looking at, I put my head down for like 10 seconds and look back up. Roman Reigns is a bloody mess. His face is just broken open and then I'm wondering what happened. I think Brock, they had another situation where Brock broke him open on purpose. And I, that aside, Brock Lesnar goes for like the sixth F5 and he wins the match. And I'm just sitting there like baffled that he won that match. The rest of the roster couldn't kick out of one F5. Roman Reigns kicked out of like five, and he still lost the match. What is WWE thinking? Because, okay, that was a legitimately surprising result. Sure it was. But at what cost? You swerve the fans, and you put up a surprise result, but at what cost? You, d you have just destroyed your entire roster. That's what the cost is. The, the entire WWE roster as it stands today. Roman Reigns ran through the entire Raw roster. Brock Lesnar ran through the entire Raw roster. Roman Reigns was supposed to win the match. But now Brock Lesnar wins the match. And now you have a part-time champion. To which no one on the roster can legitimately make a case that they deserve a title shot. Not even Roman Reigns. You screwed over your entire Raw roster. And even worse, the crowd crapped over the entire match. And you know what? I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they chanted this is awful because it was awful. It was a horrible result. It was a horrible match. I hope at some point, WWE, the brain trust of WWE sits down and says, you know what? They just won't do what we want them to do. I give up. Just turn them heel. I hope they just turn them heel because as it pertains to this match, I don't blame Brock Lesnar because we knew Brock Lesnar was lazy going into this match. He does the same thing, the same suplex. I don't blame Roman Reigns because he didn't lay out the match to where he did nothing but Superman punches and spears the entire match. I blame creative, but most importantly, you know where the, the final decision lies. And that's the person I blame. I blame Vince McMahon. What are you doing in this case? You have this match go finisher, finisher, finisher. And you have a part-time champion standing over your entire roster. Now, no matter what I've thought about Roman Reigns, at the end of every video that I make, 
pretty much every video that, that I've made, make, that I've made, and especially in the WrestleMania predictions, I've said that, you know what, I don't like it, but I want a full-time full member of the roster as a champion, and that what was what Roman Reigns would be with the championship. And now Brock Lesnar, as a part-timer, is still the champion. This is pathetic, and who knows what happens on Raw tonight. Maybe Brock loses the championship on Raw tonight, which would be horrible. But there's nobody left on the roster for Raw, for Brock to fight. The only person, the only people that are left are people that could possibly debut as a post-mania debut. That's it. That's the only thing that makes sense. Other than that, the only logical storyline is for Brock to hand the title over and say, you know what, this is just isn't for me anymore. I'm going to UFC. That's it. That's it. So now that I'm off of that, we're going to go to Braun Strowman. Like, <sighs> Braun Strowman just won the, the tag team titles. He ramshacked the entire tag team roster in that elimination match. Ramshacked Sheamus and Cesaro the entire build up until WrestleMania. And I'm thinking, okay, who we got here from the roster? Who's going to show be Braun's partner? And he picks a kid, Nicholas. Who... Who in the back there in WWE Creative thought, okay, this is going to be a phenomenal idea. Nicholas is a tag team champion. Of course, the kid's never going to forget this to where I think that's awesome. The kid's never going to forget this moment. But as for overall, what are we doing here? I figured when Brock, when Braun Strowman was going into, into the crowd, I thought we was going to get a Johnny Gargano situation to where somebody with a sign would be holding... It would be a fan and it would actually be a wrestler holding up a sign when Brian picked them and it would be the big show or somebody like that but we didn't get that we got a kid chosen as a tag team partner Brian wins the tag team championships Brian is finished the whole aura of Brian Strowman is done with me and I'm the biggest Brian supporter and I knew that they would screw it up if they didn't put him in, in a top tier match and they have so we'll see what happens with that. Moving on, we have AJ Styles and Nakamura not living up to the hype. And we have a Nakamura heel turn on top of that. Here's what happened here. AJ Styles and Nakamura had a good match that I really enjoyed. But they never let the match kick into high gear. That was not AJ Styles' fault. That was not Nakamura's fault. Like I just told you with Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, that was not their fault. But more so in this match, AJ Styles and Nakamura could have put on a five-star match. They didn't allow them to put on a five-star match. The creative or Vince McMahon never let them get into high gear. Now, whatever reason you want to put on that as to why he didn't let them get into high gear, probably because it didn't have something to do with the main event. I'm not going to go that far, but they never let them get into high gear. As a result, the match just turned out to be a good match and not the legendary match that we all thought it would be and could have been. After the match, Nakamura, Nakamura turns heel. Now, legitimately, that was very surprising. I never saw it coming, but it made no sense whatsoever. Like in, in the in the in the interim, okay, Nakamura lost the title and he's upset, so it makes sense there, but in the long term, Nakamura is the most flamboyant person on the roster. He has the most flamboyant entrance on the roster. People like to sing to his entrance. What are we going to do with that? Like, Nakamura is a heel now, and how are they going to play that out? I mean, I'm going to give it a chance to see where it goes, but I legitimately don't see a path to success for Nakamura as a heel and at the end of the day it was legitimately shocking that AJ Styles won the match because you figured that this was Nakamura's moment and now instead of using the greatest stage of them all to climax to 
a storyline. It seems like they're just beginning a storyline at WrestleMania, which makes no sense whatsoever. But it, I mean, it is what it is. Nakamura loses the match, surprisingly. I don't see a, a path to success with this heel turn, but I'll give it a chance. Moving on. We have Undertaker and John Cena. Look, I, I, this storyline annoyed me. Very much so. But we get to WrestleMania, and I'm like, okay, it's, obviously it's going to happen. And they did a phenomenal job. Of building up to the moment at WrestleMania, I gotta say, they did all of this, made it look like Cena. I mean, obviously, if you've been watching wrestling, you knew that Undertaker would show up, but if they made it look like you know Cena was gonna go out. Obviously, Undertaker shows up. Job well done. Job well done. But we get a squash match behind Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin, and The Rock. You can make the case that Undertaker and John Cena are the next two faces of WWE. So in the first time match with those guys at WrestleMania, no less, <clears throat> excuse me, we get a squash match. John Cena didn't even get a move in. Like, and there are people saying, what, you, did you want a long match with Undertaker at his age? No, I didn't want a long match. Do you remember what we got? With Lesnar and Goldberg at WrestleMania last year. That was a short match. But it was a good match that everybody enjoyed. Undertaker and Cena could have done this. Very much so. Undertaker was in good enough shape to move around to do that kind of match. They could have done that kind of match. But you do a squash match. And I love seeing the Undertaker. He looked really good. He looked in phenomenal shape. To say he's 53 years old. But... All that build up, all of that calling out the Undertaker and that's what we get, a squash match, I did not enjoy that at all. I enjoy seeing the Undertaker. I enjoy seeing him do his entrance, sure. But I did not enjoy that match. Moving on, we have Ronda Rousey. Now, surprisingly, Ronda Rousey looked really good. And that was a swerve in itself to where... You know, I had my expectations down that I didn't think she was going to do a bad job. Not whatsoever, but I didn't have the expectation that she would perform through the roof. And that's what she did. She looked really good out there. Now, there's a lot of people saying, oh, this is she's elite and she's great and let's temper expectations. She was in the tag match and she looked really good. Now, let's temper expectations. I'm willing to say that I'm legitimately surprised or shocked by that to see her exceed my expectations. And she looked really good. I'm happy for her. She looks like she wants to be a part of this wrestling thing. So I'm excited to see where she goes. It was just shocked that she looked that good. That good. And I'm excited to see where it goes from here. So moving on to the last subject of the day. Asuka taps clean in the middle of the ring. And Charlotte and, and Carmella does not cash in, surprisingly. So let's get on the Asuka part first. Here I am thinking, okay, there's been no build whatsoever to Charlotte Asuka, but I'm excited for the match. And boy, let me tell you, the match was just phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal match. The, the reversals. The moonsault reversal into, I think it was an armbar submission. It was a submission. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but it was a fantastic reversal. And the Spanish fly that Charlotte pulled off was just perfect. Textbook. Just phenomenal. But we move on throughout the match. And the match was really picking up phenomenally well. Uh, Charlotte... Locks on the figure eight. And I'm thinking, okay, match is picking up. Charlotte, uh, Asuka is going to get up out of this. We're going to move on. And Asuka taps out in the middle of the ring. Taps out. The baddest woman. I need, need them to stop putting this on Ronda Rousey because Asuka is the baddest woman on the roster. Asuka tapped out. She tapped out. And looking at this streak being broken... I'm going to say the same thing I said about Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker. Why Charlotte? Charlotte didn't need to break the streak. She didn't need that. 
to further her status in WWE. People already talk about her as the greatest women's wrestler of all time. Why did she need that? Asuka should have won here. And look, this is worse than when Goldberg lost his streak in WCW. I gotta say Undertaker as well. And I'm gonna get Undertaker as well because I mean Undertaker was at the pretty much at the end of his career. Goldberg, from the standpoint that Goldberg was 170 something in O. He had won the world title. And a US title. He was on top of the world. He had great pay-per-view matches as well, I don't want to say great. He had good pay-per-view matches as champion. Goldberg had accomplished a lot before they took that streak off of him. Asuka has not had her moment yet in WWE. Not at all. This was supposed to be her crowning moment as champion with the undefeated streak. This was supposed to be the part where she went over and stood amongst the crowd before the crowd as champion as undefeated. But... She tapped out, and what made her look really weak was she grabbed the mic and they had her say, uh, Charlotte was ready for Oscar. What? What? You just had your streak broken. You just lost the title, and that's what you do? I hope that I hope when Oscar gets in the, in the ring Tuesday night, SmackDown, or whenever, I hope the crowd chants, you tapped out. You tapped out. You tapped out. Because what is WWE thinking? Why does she have to tap out? Why does she have to lose in the first place? But moving on here, Carmella didn't even cash in. So you mean to tell me that Carmella it wants to cash in on all of these other SmackDowns, millions of SmackDowns, but the, on the biggest stage of them all, Carmella's just sitting in the backstage lounging. I mean, that makes no sense whatsoever. And now we arrive at a point to where there are some dangerous ramifications from this. Carmella has a cash in. So one of two things are going to happen. Either Carmella is going to fail to cash in on Charlotte and be the first women's money in the bank winner to fail to, to cash in or uh, excuse me, be the first women's money in the bank winner and fail to cash in. Which would be a bad look on this women's revolution stuff. Or she would be the person to cash in on Charlotte. And Charlotte would lose after breaking Oscar's undefeated streak to a freaking cash in. Either way it goes, WWE is going to look mighty stupid when the moment happens. So at the end of the day, my finish was what I predicted was that Charlotte would cash in Seth Rollins style and beat, excuse me, Carmella would cash in Seth Rollins style and beat Charlotte. Therefore, they could say that Oscar has never been beaten, never been submitted, never been pinned, and you can have the successful cash in. That would have worked. But as it pertains now, they're in a lot of trouble. Booking wise, storyline wise. I don't just get, I don't know where to go from here. I don't know where Oscar goes from here. Oscar goes to nothing. You better not, you don't have the right to challenge Charlotte. You tapped out in the middle of the ring. So I don't know where she goes from here. Obviously, Charlotte is going to be okay. She's the champ. So I, looking at this whole WrestleMania overall, like it was going on a path to being great. They should have saved that, that, the tagline they had last year, the ultimate thrill ride, this was the ultimate thrill ride. It was going up to one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time, and then it just took a steep turn downward, and it never regained. Like, it, it was going down, 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 and then the Brock and Roman was just like the exclamation point of it going downhill. And I mean... I guess the tagline from this WrestleMania is WrestleMania 34, Vince Russo's dream, because they had swerves everywhere. If you if you would ask me, I would think that Vince Russo was booking this, that they secretly hired him from one night to book this entire WrestleMania. But in the end, I'm very disappointed. I'm very let down, but it's WrestleMania. They had these good moments, but 
No, it's just, it was just not the WrestleMania that we thought it would be. Let me know down below. What did you think of this WrestleMania? What did you think of all of these swerves? And leave your boy a like on this video.